bring up for me Samuel from the dead. The woman saw Samuel and she cried out with a loud voice. She saw something she wasn't ready for. She saw something. She, she had done this many times and she knew what it was to deal with, with spirits and deal in the dark world with spirit guides and channelers and, 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 and forces that would appear in that cave. She understood. She had seen them come in hoods and, 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 and demonic powers to lead and guide and tell. There are people who who have super, who have been empowered supernaturally by demonic spirits. It's not a game. He said to her, what is his form? And she said, it's an old man coming up and he's covered in a mantle. Can I preach right there? The mantle was the prayer shawl. It was Samuel. God is hijacking a seance. You think the devil's in control because they got their blood of chickens and doing voodoo and this God says nothing can keep me out. If I want to come, I can come. I can hijack a seance. I'm preaching my whole sermon. I got to calm down. What is his form? It's an old man coming she, and instantly she per, saw perceived it was Samuel. He stooped with his face to the ground and bowed down to Samuel said, why have you disturbed me from bringing me up? Saul answered, I'm deeply distressed. Here it is again, fear. The Philistines war against me. Listen to these words. God has departed from me and does not answer me anymore by prophets or by dreams. Go with me to the valley of Jezreel. There is a mountain called Mount Gilboa. The Philistines have cornered King Saul. His boys, his sons, including Jonathan, are with him. His own flesh and blood, heir to the throne. The army of Israel is backed in a corner. They are completely surrounded in a valley by the Philistines and there's no escape. And here this tall, handsome young man named Saul, who was the first king of Israel. I can see him as he stands in the moonlight and he looks out and from a distance and he, he is, he is wrapped in that garment of gloom. He is riveted with fear as he sees the campfires from a distance and the torches of the Philistines and he hears the laughter and the Mocking, mocking, knowing that there's no escape. And in the morning, that more powerful and strong army is about to meet him and his army. And he, he's tormented with the fact that God has departed from me and he hears me no more. And in a moment of desperation, the fear of death, the dread of life after death in the condition that he is in. He says, is there not a, a medium that can give me direction? I'm so desperate. God won't answer me. And I need to know God's plan for my life. And in that moment, they said, there is a witch at Endor. It's a cave. And he, at that moment, decided to connect with the Prince of Darkness. He, at that moment, by entering in where that medium was, and he, this is so important because he knew the Spirit of God, because he knew the anointing of God. He had had holy oil poured on him by the greatest prophet, arguably, of the Old Testament, Samuel. He had been so affected by that oil that it turned him into another man. And he had a heart, the scripture said, that had been touched by God. He prophesied and the people even said, is Saul now among the prophets? He was such a worshiper that he began to dance and sing with them. Now this man who had felt the presence, experienced the anointing, knew the joy of the Lord, knew the presence of God, has now turned and connected with the prince of darkness, turned a cave into a sanctuary of satanic worship. And there he turns and he says, God won't speak to me in dreams. 
because of my disobedience, because of my rebellion, because of my constantly not listening to God time after time after time. Point number one of this little sermon is this. If you do not listen to God, if you repeatedly disobey and do not listen to God, he may stop speaking to you. That story teaches you simply that if you don't listen to God, he may stop speaking to you. Notice point number two is this. When you can't reach God, God can still reach you. And the theologians, this is, this is a hard one to understand. This is a hard story to understand. God clearly forbids people to participate in, in, in talking to the dead, in consulting the dead, in uh, palm reading, in fortune telling, in astrology, and, and, and fortune telling, in reading of, 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 of palms and, and, and channeling and crystals and talking to rocks and praying to statues, whether it be Buddha statues or whatever, and burning incense. This is spiritual idolatry and it is extremely dangerous for especially someone who knows the living God. Someone who has experienced the presence of God. Someone who knows the word of God. You are not in the same category. This scripture teaches you, you do not go and touch certain things. You are in great danger to mental breakdown, spiritual breakdown, emotional torment, fear and terrifying uh, emotions can tormenting spirits can begin to take over your life. I don't know how any way to sugarcoat this one. I got to tell the truth like I feel it today. When I look at this story and I see it, we think that witchcraft is something that, 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 that only extreme and it's radical and it's out there, but you know, we, it really doesn't affect our life. And yet when Paul wrote to the church at uh, in Galatians, he said, he said, uh, who has bewitched you to believe another gospel? You've turned away from the cross and you've turned away from the truth and you've turned away from the holy living and you're believing another gospel. And I want to know, you need to understand the word bewitched means the evil eye. You're under the influence of the evil eye. He warned that witchcraft was a work of the flesh. He names it right beside sins. He says, and now the works of the flesh are adultery and fornication and lying and drunkenness. And right in the middle of it, he puts witchcraft. What is, what is witchcraft? Rebellion is as of, the scripture says this in Samuel, rebellion is as of the sin of witchcraft. Rebellion against what? Against spiritual authority. There's righteous authority. Listen to me carefully. There's righteous authority and there's unrighteous authority. Righteous authority is enforced by the Holy Spirit. Unrighteous authority is enforced by demonic powers. And both are real and both have power and influence. And, and what you give yourself to, you either are going to stay under the righteous authority of God's word or you do like Saul and you step over into the dark side. Then you come under the authority that is unrighteous authority. That is evil. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel so that you can get notifications on new posts and live streams. Be sure to share this video with a friend. You never know how you can send the Word of God right when somebody needs to hear it. And you can use your social influence for good, for the glory of God. Thanks again. Share it with a friend. And I really appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.